Hi guys, in this video we're going to be learning about specific heat capacity. We'll look at an example of specific heat capacity and then we'll finish with a summary. Specific heat capacity is all about trying to raise the temperature of objects. So if we want to raise the temperature of an object, we need to heat it up by giving it some energy. For example, if we want to boil a pan of water, then we need to put some extra energy in its thermal energy store. Now let's say that you've decided how much you want to raise the temperature of some material, then it turns out that the amount of energy that you need to give the material depends on what the material is made of. So what we are saying is that some objects might require more energy to result in the same temperature change as other objects. So for example, if we were trying to heat up gold or water by one degree centigrade, then it turns out that the energy required to heat the gold by one degree is less than the energy required to heat the water by one degree. Put in another way, we're realizing that the same change in thermal energy is not necessarily going to result in the same temperature change for two different objects. And we can sum up this idea with the object's specific heat capacity. The specific heat capacity of a substance is the amount of energy that you need to raise the temperature of one kilogram of the substance by one degree centigrade. So let's consider supplying heat to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water and one kilogram of mercury, both by one degree centigrade. And remember that the definition of specific heat capacity that we just gave says that it's the energy required to raise one kilogram by one degree centigrade. So whatever the energy is that's needed here is the specific heat capacity. For example, for water, it turns out to be 4,200 joules that are required to raise one kilogram of water by one degree centigrade. On the other hand, for mercury, we require just 140 joules to raise one kilogram of mercury by one degree centigrade. So let's go over again what these numbers are going to mean. One kilogram of water required 4,200 joules of energy to raise its temperature by one degree centigrade. And therefore, we say that it has a specific heat capacity of 4,200 joules per kilogram per degree centigrade. On the other hand, one kilogram of mercury only required 140 joules of energy to raise its temperature by one degree centigrade. And therefore we say that its specific heat capacity is 140 joules per kilogram per degree centigrade. Notice in general that we've seen that water has a higher specific heat capacity, and this means it takes more energy to heat it up. Okay, let's move on and try and find an equation for the energy change when a change in temperature occurs. To start off with, we need to find out how the energy required depends on the mass of the substance we're trying to heat. Well, if I asked you to heat one kilogram of water and then I asked you to heat another kilogram of water, you would expect that you would need twice the amount of energy to heat all of the water up by one degree centigrade. So in that case, how much energy do we require to raise the temperature of two kilograms of a substance by one degree centigrade? Well, for water, each kilogram requires 4,200 joules. So altogether, we require 8,400 joules. So it turns out that doubling the mass of the substance means that we require double the energy to heat the substance by the same amount. So the energy required is proportional to the mass that we want to heat. So we now know how the energy required depends on the mass, but how does the energy required depend on the temperature change we actually want to achieve? So for example, how much energy will we require to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by two degrees centigrade? Well, let's say that we wanted to raise the temperature of our water from 10 degrees to 12 degrees, then we could do this by first going from 10 to 11 degrees, and then from 11 degrees to 12 degrees. Each of these processes would take 4,200 joules. So altogether, doubling the temperature change that we want has also doubled the amount of energy that we need to 8,400 joules. 
So what we've learnt from this thought experiment is that to double the temperature change of a substance, we require double the energy to heat it by the same amount. So the energy required is proportional to the temperature change. Altogether, we now know that the energy required will increase when the mass increases, when the temperature change we need increases, or when the specific heat capacity increases. And combining these factors together, we can get our equation for the energy change in terms of the mass and the temperature change. So in terms of an equation, we say that the change in energy required to heat a substance is equal to the mass of the substance we're trying to heat multiplied by the specific heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature that we want to achieve. Here we have used the triangle symbol called delta to say change in and then we've used the letter C for specific heat capacity and the Greek letter theta for the temperature. And since this is an important equation, we will draw a box around it. As for the units, the energy change is measured in joules, the mass is measured in kilograms, the temperature change is measured in degrees centigrade, and the specific heat capacity is measured in joules per kilogram per degree centigrade. Now let's take a look at an example where we have to use the concept of specific heat capacity. So here's the question. How much energy is required to raise the temperature of 200 grams of water with a heat capacity of 4,200 joules per kilogram per degree centigrade by 73 degrees centigrade? Well, the first step is to write out the relevant equation. So what we need is the equation that gives the energy change when we know the mass, the heat capacity and the temperature change. Well, that will be the equation that we gave on the last page, which is delta E is equal to the mass multiplied by the specific heat capacity and then multiplied by the temperature change. The second step to calculating this energy change will then be to check that the quantities that we've been given are in the correct units. Well, the temperature change was given as 73 degrees centigrade, which is already in the correct units. And the specific heat capacity was given as 4,200 joules per kilogram per centigrade, also already in the correct units. However, the mass we have been given as 200 grams, which is not the correct units because we need the mass to be in kilograms. Well, to get from grams to kilograms, we divide by 1,000, so we have 0 0.2 kilograms. Now that we have all of our quantities in the right units, we can happily substitute them into our equation, giving us that the energy change is equal to 0 0.2 multiplied 4,200 multiplied by 73. Finally, putting all this into a calculator gives a total energy change required of 61,320 joules. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE Physics and Combined Science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snaprovise smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.